This is a fascinating old city because right in the middle of this old city, we also have modern communist era architecture making its way, ramming its way through the middle of the city of Bratislava. Right over there, we see the beautiful castle and we're right by St. Martin's Church. But this place was actually destroyed. The neighborhood right next to us, it was the Jewish district. In order to build this huge bridge, they end up ramming through the Jewish district in order to make way. Uh, the bridge is a tourist attraction today and we're going to catch a glimpse. This is my first time ever exploring Bratislava, which is the capital of Slovakia, which is a landlocked country in Central Europe. And it's the city, the capital city that's closest to another capital because we're right by Vienna, Austria as well. And also we're right by Hungary. So it's a very, very unique area. It was one of the richest places of the Austro-Hungarian Empire. I'm Ariel, this is Urbanist. Let me know where you're watching from and let's explore Bratislava for the very first time. Welcome everyone, nice to see you here. I'm Ariel, this is Urbanist and we are in Bratislava right now. And this right here is St. Martin's Church. This was where Mary Teresa the female queen of the Austro-Hungarian Empire was crowned. This is a very, very important city for the Austro-Hungarian Empire and continues to be an important city for modern day Slovakia. But this was one of the richest places in the Austro-Hungarian Empire for quite a while. So we're going to see a very interesting old city as we wander around. And there is the castle, which I hope to show you most likely tomorrow. Uh, so stay tuned, either on the live video or in the short video. And um, I also have a time limit. I got to explore with all of you the old city in 40 minutes. I think we could do it. <laughs> it's a tiny old city. Uh, but the reason I have this time limit is because Many of the traditional Slovakian restaurants uh, close by 10 p.m. And I just want to get in there right at 9 p.m. Hopefully I can find a good one. Hopefully one that is uh, fairly easy to live stream in because I might be doing a live stream of classic Slovak food. So let me know if you want to see that. But let's go on with the show. So here we have a memorial for the Jewish district that was destroyed in order to build this bridge, the uh, Slovak National Uprising Bridge. And the church was nearly destroyed as well. It's been a travesty in terms of historic preservation. The communist regime that took over Slovakia following the years of World War II didn't seem to care too much about historic preservation. Uh, they wanted to build these countries anew, similar to how the Soviet Union was doing within their own territory. And hence, there was not much respect for old churches like these. Luckily, this one was saved and not destroyed. But we can see the massive portion that was destroyed right over here, what appears to be in red. And we can see that the church had a distinct, unique character. The buildings right next to it had a distinct, unique character. Because there was a synagogue right next to the church. So this goes to show how integrated these countries in Central Europe were between Jews and Christians. You know, we have this um, sense from Hollywood that Jews lived in the poor areas of the Central European countries. But no, no, that was not the case. Uh, and that has become increasingly evident as we traveled from Germany to Poland and now to Slovakia. And 
Let me show you a little bit more of these. Hello to Colleen, hello Nicole, hello Michelle. Hello everyone, nice to see you here. Welcome. Hello Picard. So here we have what used to be the city. Wow, okay, so this is the area that was destroyed in order to build way for the bridge. Right over here, look. The combination of an old composite of a new photo of Bratislava and an old photo of the cityscape of Bratislava. Similar to New York City, how we lost little Syria and we lost many other neighborhoods uh, along the Brooklyn Queens Expressway in um, Little Norway in Bay Ridge or Guanis. We've lost many neighborhoods for the same reason. But what bridge is this? Well, the bridge nowadays is a massive tourist attraction. People know it as the UFO bridge or UFO bridge, uh, the locals might call it. <laughs> and the reason for that is, is because it looks like a gigantic UFO. Let's take a closer look and then go back into the old town. Hello, Tamia. Marie says, yeah, the commies didn't care for religious symbols. Yeah, that was the other factor. Thank you for, for uh, mentioning that specifically, Maurice. Yeah, you're right. Uh, the communists did not care for religion either, uh, which I disagree with personally. I'll, I'll let everyone know that. Um, and it is a shame because um, religious architecture is integral to too many cities around the world, whatever the religion is, it's integral, but it's definitely integral to European and Western culture. A lot of, of our grandest buildings and the beginning of certain styles of architecture started with churches, Christian churches specifically, like Gothic, Romanesque, and then beyond that, the Greek temples of, polythe of the polytheistic beliefs back then. All right here. Is there a little Slovakia in NYC? No, Susie. There's a very small Slovakian population in the US. Well, small for the standards of other populations. It, about 800,000 Slovaks are in, the Slovak Americans are in the US. So it's pretty small. You know, compared to Irish, compared to Germans, compared to Polish. Polish, I think, is upwards of a million, um, compared to Puerto Ricans, for sure. And the population of Slovakia itself is about 5.4 million. So on top of that UFO <laughs> bridge, actually, let's take a, one more look at it. <laughs> Maybe I'll do a specific video on this if I have time. On top of that bridge is a restaurant that you can visit. Apparently, this was built during the time of co the communist regime that was in control of Slovakia after World War II. Uh, this is known as the Slovak Uprising Monument uh, or Bridge. And Slovak uh, Uprising was 83,000 strong uh, one of, of the larger uprisings in Central Europe. We learned about the Polish uprising as well uh, before. So um, when the communists took control, they built this gigantic bridge. However, they did not apparently allow the locals to go to the very top restaurant. It was for visitors or whoever they wanted to show off. The reason that is the case, or I heard that was the case, and I don't know for this for sure, that's what I just heard from a few uh, articles and videos that I saw, um, was that they did not want the locals to see how close they actually were to the West, quote unquote, which was Austria, just across the border. Uh, that they could easily just hopped across the Danube and went over to the free territories. <laughs> but now it's open to everyone. So yeah, this is the capital of Slovakia, Bratislava. Earlier, uh, yesterday I was in uh, Banska Bistrica, which is, I think might be the third largest city.
or fourth, one of those two. Teresa's has such rich history. I agree, and beautiful monuments. Look at the castle there. Let's take a closer look at the castle before we go deeper into the old city. Courtney says, I'm excited to see the castle. Well, hopefully I will show it to you either in a live video or in a short video. I'm here for a long time. I'll do my best. And just a heads up, um, this is a wandering. Uh, this is my first time in Bratislava. I haven't had the time to research the history deeply. I just researched a little bit so I know just a little bit off the top of my head so I don't have deep knowledge of it uh, so uh, do your research afterwards uh, to learn more about it and if any Slovaks are tuning in right now and have extra insights do let us know happy to read it as we're walking around live hey Benjamin says your uh, Europea mall is my fave Always in there on my breaks off the ship. Hey, Benjamin, now, uh, what type of ships are you running? Ooh, look who we have here, ladies and gentlemen. Here we have Hans Christian Andersen. Hans Christian Andersen, the famous writer of The Ugly Duckling and countless other books and tales. This man is one of the more treasured writers of children's stories. The Little Mermaid is another one. He's a Danish writer. Uh, and we visited the Little Mermaid statue in Copenhagen back in 2022. And I visited many times on live video and also on short video, his statue in Central Park. But apparently Hans Christian Andersen visited Bratislava and he fell in love with it. <laughs> and he talked about it publicly. Uh, and uh, apparently this statue is built in his honor for a man who fell in love with Bratislava. I don't know too much more about why or how or when, but if anyone does, do let us know. Apparently, if you stroke his finger, you end up getting good luck. So let's rub some good luck. All right, Hans Christian Andersen, thank you so much for the good luck. I appreciate you. So Bratislava, my first impression right now, I just arrived like two or three hours ago. I had to take a call, so I haven't had the chance to walk around. It's very quiet, but it is a uh, Monday, so let me know. Uh, is it is it a bit more full on the weekend? But there's nice restaurants. the The city looks clean. I feel safe. Uh, generally, so far, my past two days in Slovakia, I felt very calm and safe. Uh, it's been a very beautiful country. Also, the beautiful mountain ranges and the pine trees. I, I just love the look of this country as well. You know, Slovakia is a very mountainous, landlocked country. And uh, it doesn't get that much fame yet. A lot of people visit nearby Vienna and nearby Budapest. Uh, but most tourists don't venture often to Bratislava. The maximum might be usually just a day trip for many tourists coming in from Vienna because it's only about an hour away from train. I assume you can make a day trip if you're also in Budapest. And also Bratislava has the bad reputation, <laughs> unfortunately, for being the setting of a horror film, Hostel by Eli Roth. <laughs> and when I saw Hostel, you know, uh, I don't watch horror movies now today. I really am not, no longer a fan of them, but I did watch them when I was a little kid or a teenager. And uh, I did enjoy Hostel when I first saw it, but they show Bratislava in a very different light. Uh, I had the, the impression about the Slava from that film, and luckily it is not like that film. It is beautiful, it is bright, it is comfortable. Nicole says, uh, Gary says that uh, Hans Christian Andersen had uh, E.T. hands. Yeah, I think, I think Hans Christian Andersen was a lanky guy, just in general. So, uh, 
all the statues I've seen, I've seen like maybe three or four statues of him in my travels. Uh, he's always depicted as very, rather lanky. Hey, Marit. Thank you so much for tuning in. It says, I just read your post on Facebook. Thank you for sharing a little bit about your background. It was interesting. Hey, Marie, my pleasure. Thank you so much for tuning in to these live videos. Um, so for people who are curious, I just posted uh, a little personal note on YouTube and on Facebook. So feel free to read it afterwards. Or feel free to read it right now and then come back and say uh, what you think of it. All right, let's continue walking around. Let's uh, go into the old town. We're in the surrounding border. You're coming up close to the human chessboard. There's a human chessboard? Oh, oh, okay. All right, let's show that. And sorry, Nightbot is freaking out with the time. But the city's so close to Vienna, says Ida. Yeah, it is. It is. Hey, Gary, Susie, the other Susie, Emp. Ida says it's very silent. Yeah, it's very silent. You need to look at the back of the statue, says Benjamin. Oh, Benjamin, too late. If I'm going to have been there, I'm going to walk, wander around rather fast because I want to eat. <laughs> and uh, most restaurants close already at 10 p.m. And I, I uh, didn't have the time to eat dinner yet. And that's why I'm going to wander fast so I can uh, get to a restaurant at 9 p.m., eat something, maybe live stream it, and then uh, I'll show you more Bratislava hopefully tomorrow. Uh, I can't tell you what time, but hopefully I'll show you more tomorrow. Stay tuned. But let's, let's go. Let's, let's, uh, let's walk. Let's work, work up that appetite. Nicole says, where are the people? I don't know. I don't know. It's very empty. Very empty. Susie says it's a speed wander. It is a speed wander. It's now 20.46 p.m., yeah. It is. Hey, European countries are so clean. We're to see litter, says I Irina. Yeah, uh, a lot of European cities. I mean, Europe is a big continent and it's a huge population. So not all cities are created equal. And I for sure tend to really go to the bigger cities and the more touristy ones, uh, usually. Uh, so I've mostly seen the clean ones, but there are certainly more grungier cities in Europe. I don't tend to visit them too often, but out of the touristy cities that are a bit more grungier, it's like Naples, it's parts of France, uh, like parts of Paris, definitely. Um, I haven't been to Marseille, but I heard it's a, a bit more on the grittier side. I assume other parts of Germany, but I haven't been to those parts. So there are very clean cities, uh, and especially if you are looking to be are you traveling and you're traveling to any of the many of the tourist cities out here yeah you'll probably encounter very clean clean streets hey benjamin says if you turn left on the mcdonald's you'll see the most famous statue Ooh, okay all right oh i can't wait to see this uh thank you so much benjamin I'm so glad so many Slovaks and people who've been to Slovakia are tuning in. This is a beautiful square. Wow. I am amazed. I mean, it's quiet. I feel like I have the city to myself. There's barely anyone around. And if a random good looking woman approaches me and says, hey, you want to visit an art museum? I will deny her because I've seen the movie Hostel and I know better. 
<laughs> but the city's gorgeous. My first impression is this old city is gorgeous. Now, I don't know about the rest of Bratislava. Nebud says uh, Marseille is nice, but depends where you go. Okay, all right. Thank you so much for letting me know, Nebul. Nebul, I hope you live stream from Marseille. Let me know if you've done it. Everyone, check out Nebul on YouTube. He live streams extensively from the south of France. And he's an awesome live streamer. Shows a lot of places that other live streamers usually won't show. And some places that m tourists won't go to usually. It's jarring to see as a New Yorker, nobody's in a rush, says so Susie. It is jarring. I offended a woman when I tried to buy a magnet in Krakow. And, um, you know, I was, it was early in the morning. Uh, I'm on a road trip, so we're, we're, we got to head out usually most mornings, 9 a.m. or 10 a.m. And we're on a tight schedule because we're really hopping around a lot of places. And some of these distances can be quite long. And Evan is doing all the driving. So uh, it's a group of three. We're on a two week road trip. And Evan is the only one doing the driving. You'll see Evan again soon in an uh, upcoming live video. And because of that, uh, I was uh, wandering around Krakow in the morning with my coffee. And I saw a shop and I saw these, these cool little magnets. And I, I wanted to buy one of the magnets. And um, the woman, um, I bought in cash. And the woman uh, told me the price. And she was like shuffling around for something. I'm not sure what she was shuffling around for. So rather than wait to hand her the cash, I just placed it down on the counter. <laughs> like normal. Like this, this is rather normal in other countries, actually. You rarely hand off cash by hand. Uh, and in New York, it's, it goes either way. So I just put the cash on the counter. And the woman is like, um, why are you hurry? <laughs> she she didn't know English too well, so she said, "Why you hurry?" <laughs> and I'm like, oh, "Oh no, I just uh, I just <laughs> I'm from New York." And she's like, "This is not New York. This is Poland." <laughs> I'm not sure why she took it to offense, but uh, I just wanted that magnet and just get out. Uh, Oleg says it's just a uh, slow season. Uh, no, tur no hordes of tourists. Also, it's dinner time. Yeah, that could be the case. I assume a lot of these countries might be suffering in tourism due to the proximity of the war that's happening just across the border. PB says your trip was also filmed here. Your trip is an awesome movie. I really enjoyed it when I watched it. All right, let's see this uh, this uh, statue. Marie says, you can take the Ariel out of New York, but you can't take the New York out of Ariel. No. <laughs> All right, someone's ready to get a photo by the statue. All right, let's check it out. Here is, you know, um, Bell, uh, Brussels has the mannequin piss. Copenhagen has the Little Mermaid. New York has the Statue of Liberty. Bratislava has the man at work. Right over here, the man coming out of the sewer system. Watching for something. I'm not entirely sure what he's watching for. What do you think he's watching for? Is he watching for traffic? Is he just, is he just popping out? Maybe for a quick breather as he continues work down into the doldrums of Bratislava. Or maybe he is a, is a sw uh, sewer dweller. And he's going out for just a little bit of sun in order to survive. Not a real sewer, but looks like one. <laughs> and apparently, uh, this guy lost his head. He lost his head because there were some careless drivers back when the old city allowed cars to pass through. And some careless driver just rammed through the curb, not noticing the statue, and off with his head. So, 
in order to prevent the few drivers that might drive here, they put this huge sign, man at work. Oleg says, uh, <laughs> he's, Ron says he's just taking a bathroom break. The, the sewer man is called Kumil. Kumil, okay, Kumil. Oh, that's adorable. Marie says, I think he just farted and came up for fresh air, leaving his colleagues uh, in the fumes. <laughs> Maurice, that's a great theory. I love that theory. Firestorm says that looks a bit creepy. Okay, I love it. I love it. It's, it's awesome. Nicole says it's also a bit creepy. Uh, Darius says, I love interesting art. And Marit, nice to see you here. Marie says, uh, Matej, sorry, Matej says, I used to live here, missed that place. Hope you enjoy it. But as with all European cities, winter is always a bit calmer. Yeah, I assume like summer would be a bit more livelier. Don't trip over him, says Susie. Yeah, I try, well, try not to. So goodbye, Kumil. Let's continue wandering the streets. And look, huge communist style, uh, communist style architecture, modern architecture, right next to older architecture. I'm scared you won't get any dinner, says Maurice. Don't worry, Maurice. I got this. I got this. Worst case scenario, I'll go to this uh, classic Slovakian, Slovakian establishment, Burger King. Beautiful restaurant, look at that. Mon Hue. I heard this place was famous for its hot chocolate. Firestorm says this place looks so isolated. It really, <laughs> it's quiet, it's quiet. Yeah. You know, we, we're in a fairly small city compared to the other larger cities, 800,000 people or so. I'm not sure how big is the metropolitan area is. And look at the sign for this, um, for this Mexican restaurant. <laughs> um, you know, in the, in the US, I think this Mexican restaurant sign wouldn't fly, unfortunately. It's called Narcos. The man is wearing a huge sombrero and he has a gigantic mustache. You know, uh, some would say in the US, this is politically incorrect, but we're in Slovakia, so who cares? <laughs> so here we have Narcos. Uh, Burritos, my god, I would love to try a Slovak burrito. <laughs> Should I come back here and try a nice Slovak burrito? Let me know. Called Marcos, the gigantic mustache. Hey, Fire Service says this place is freaking me out without seeing a lot of people. Well, I mean, there's maybe Eli Roth, Eli Roth the director of Hostel, had uh, direct experience. <laughs> Maybe he went through something here in Bratislava. He was like, oh my God, I gotta make a movie out of this. Oh, this looks nice, this uh, restaurant. Famous cherry liqueur from Ukraine. Oh, wow. Look at that. Hey, Oleg, have you had this uh, cherry liqueur? Any of the Ukrainian urbanists in the end? Let me know. Cherry liqueur. Ron says, you must sport that mustache that we see in the Mexican restaurant. You know, I wish I could. Uh, my mustache, uh, my beard grows a lot, but my mustache really doesn't. 
It would take me years to grow a mustache that big. If I could. So a few people have asked in previous live streams, how can I, how am I getting by with English? So English is not as widely spoken as say Germany, where we came from earlier, or definitely not Belgium. Belgium, everyone almost speaks English, uh, but people understand some English. Uh, you'll encounter, especially in restaurants and bars, there might be someone who really doesn't know much English at all but there's someone, at least in the restaurant, from all the restaurants I've encountered, we've been to maybe four or five, uh, where there was at least one person who knew English. Uh, if they didn't know speak it too, if they didn't speak it too well, they at least knew uh, uh, how to understand it. Uh, and then menus, uh, many restaurants we've been to offer menus in English. Uh, so it has been pretty easy to navigate with just English. And here in Bratislava, I'm getting the vibe that English is used pretty often. Uh, so I assume most restaurants here would have a menu in English. LA says, yes, uh, we have a huge population of Slovaks in LA. Oh, interesting. Yeah, I was shocked to hear that there was a lot of, I have quite a few uh, Slovak urbanists so, wow, thank you so much for tuning in, Slovak Urbanist. Look at this theater. Wow, this is gorgeous. More modern, this probably was built in the 19, it looks kind of Art Nouveau, but a bit more modern. So if I were to make a random guess, I would say this is 1940s. I don't know for sure, but it's gorgeous for sure. Was it difficult in London with English, says uh, Ron. No, luckily, no. <laughs> Rather easy to get by with English in London. Well, you know, there are certain parts of London, definitely, for sure. Uh, you would be hard-pressed uh, to hear English all the time. Joe says, it seems like you have the town to yourself. I do. I, I mean, I do. Like, I don't think anyone's here. I, like rest, so many of these restaurants are empty. Like there's no one in sight in these restaurants. I think now we're about to leave the old city. I love that the place does not have so much light pollution, just enough light to navigate, says Darren. Yeah, I agree. Some places can be so brightly lit that if you live in the, mi the middle of the city, you would have to get yourself really strong blackout curtains. That is the case in some parts of New York. Definitely the case in some parts of London as well. Maurice says, I booked the entire town. Uh, Ruzi says, Slovakia and Slovenia, very similar names in different countries. Indeed, yes, very different countries. We are not in Slovenia, we're in Slovakia. So Slovakia borders Czech Republic, used to part, be part of Czechoslovakia, but then they uh, split off. And here we have one of the main roads with the tram passing through and bus lane as well. Or I think the bus, it might be a, let's see if it's a tram or a bus. Let's see. Yeah, this probably would be a tram. My maternal great grandfather was a coal miner in Slovakia and Canada in the late 1800s and the early 1900s. A lot of Slovaks work in the mines. Yes. And there's a, a, tour, uh, a few famous Slovaks or people of Slovak ancestry in the US and Canada. There is uh, Andy Warhol, probably one of the more well known Slovaks. And then you have also 
Um, Angelina Jolie has Slovak ancestry as well. There are the trams. I love that these European cities have trams. We really need to introduce trams here in New York. It is a shame that we don't have trams in New York City. Hey, <laughs> Darren says, it's fascinating seeing you in the dark as it's only noon in Vancouver. Watching you now is a bit trippy. Yeah, yeah, it is a bit trippy. <laughs> I can imagine. Wait until I go to Japan or Australia. Then you'll be really in for a trip. I'll be, too, I'll be, I'll be live streaming for the next day. Wait until I go to Samoa. Ooh, pizza. Let's see how Slovak pizza looks like. For some reason, oh my god, there's Hawaiian, look at that. But for some reason, in Slovakia, there's a lot of corn on pizza, and I'm not entirely sure why. Yeah. Aye, aye, just look at this. Yeah. I'm not in the, food, in the mood for pizza. All right. All right, is anyone here? So um, that said, uh, Slovakians I've found uh, very nice, friendly. Uh, usually service has been very good. You know, you don't expect American friendliness if you're coming to Slovakia or just in general Central Europe. Um, but don't expect as much sternness as, say, uh, Germany or a standoffness, standoffishness that might happen if you are a non-French speaker in France. You won't get that in Slovakia or Poland so far from what I've experienced. People tend to be very friendly. Wow, look at this building. Marie says, no New York pizza in Europe. Uh, there is, yeah. I mean, th that what we pass is, is typical, a, new, a typical New York style pizza. Uh, it just has weird toppings that you won't find in New York, like corn. But that's a New York style. Sometimes they make it a bit thicker than you would find. And sometimes it's not as flop, floppy as New York. All right, let's go now into back into the old city. Ida says, lovely square. Yeah, it is a lovely square. All right. I see a, a, a very stately building there in the they're ahead. All right, so we're going to go to the stately building that's up ahead. Hmm. Someone with the electric car. Um, we're going to go to the stately building up ahead. And I am going to rush over to one of the traditional restaurants and see if I can live stream from there. Let me know if you want to see a live stream meal. I'll do my best to do, to do that. Um, and let me know if you want to see a live stream meal. All right. Let's continue off to this final stop on this wander. Susie says, I'm back. I was having my blood drawn. Oh, no, Susie, we haven't visited the vampires yet. Uh, you, you did it too early. Oh, my God, look at this modern building that was built over what appears to be a much, much older either building or part of a wall. Since we are in a very old city, this might have been a walled city at some point, maybe. Colleen says, yes, please. Irina says, yes, food, please. Cuckoo says, yes, let's check out their food. Yes. If I do a food live stream, it will be in a separate live stream. So stay tuned. Maurice says, I forgot to send you donut money. Hey, <laughs> Maurice, thank you so much for the five euro super chat. That will definitely cover at least two donuts. And you know, the Slovaks have a few donut shops. It's like Poland, you know. 
That's cool. I like that donut culture has made its way to Slovakia. Wow. Kelly says, hello from Slovakia. Hey, Kelly, I'm so happy you're tuning in from Slovakia. Um, how do I say hello again? Budižen? Uh, Budižen? Rather than Jen Dobri? Oh, Dobrižen. Dobrižen. I might be mispronouncing that part of my Slovak. But thank you so much for tuning in. So, Slovakia speaks a Slavic language, Slovak. Many Slavic languages have similarities. Um, so if you know one of them, you can somewhat understand the other ones. Apparently, if you know Slovak, you'll most likely understand Czech easily. The other ones are a little bit more difficult, but there's similarities. And wow. That's beautiful. Oh my. Darren says, the best part of Europe is walking around, wandering, meeting people, having good food. We should be there with you. Hey, Darren, yeah, I mean, that's why I love it. Wow. Oh, my. Oh, uh, I think I can walk in. I will walk in. Okay, so I'm in Bratislava, and it seems like I found an art museum after all. So let me know, should I go to the art museum in Bratislava? Uh, vote now, forever hold your peace. Nonetheless, I hate to be in a hurry, but that's the name of travel. Sometimes you're going to visit places you have to be in a hurry, and that's okay. That's okay. You know, um, I like sometimes visiting places fast, and then maybe, who knows, I'll come back. But... Thank you everyone so much for tuning in. Now I'm going to rush over and try to find some food before it's too late and everything closes. Everyone, thank you so much for tuning in. Hopefully see you soon, maybe, if I go live from a restaurant. So put on those notifications. Nonetheless, you'll see me tomorrow, nonetheless, on live video. Everyone, keep being awesome and always keep on exploring. Have a great day, everyone. Bye-bye. I still don't know how to say thank you in... Slovaks, I'll say thank you in Polish. Dziękuję. Have a good day.